How you doing? This is Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures and in this video I'm going to share with you how to hunt and pray like a Catholic. I'm not telling you you have to believe and pray this way. I'm simply sharing with you how Catholics view this whole thing. This is the way that Jesus has brought me to this belief. So if you don't agree with me that's fine but don't try to convince me of something else because in my personal relationship with Jesus, this is what he's asked me to do. So I'll share with you our disposition so you, maybe you'll learn a little something. And I'm also going to share with you a few hunts and how it portrayed, how it played out in those hunts. To start off with, at the end of October here in Iowa, we had a, our first snowfall. I was all excited. I was thinking, man, the deer are going to really stand out. This cold snap is going to really get a moving. The rut's going to be coming soon. I got to get out there. And I hunted mostly the whole day and uh, it was very painful and cold and I did not see a single deer and you probably know if you're a hunter that to go out and put all that effort and not see a single deer it's emotionally draining it's, it's very difficult so what do you do with that now in our sort of spirituality our Catholic spirituality what we do is we offer that to Jesus and we say Jesus I offer this to you in union with your cross for the sake of souls for, the, for reparation for sins. Where does that come from? Well, passages like Colossians 1.24. St. Paul said, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, for in my flesh I make up for what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ. Now, what does he mean by that? Obviously, there's nothing lacking in the sacrifice and the offering of Jesus. It was complete. However, Jesus wants us to follow him and become part of this mission to save souls. So Jesus very often in his ministry would tell you and me, if you want to be my disciple, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross every day and follow me. One, one of many examples would be Matthew 16, 24. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross every day and follow me. What does it mean to deny yourself? Hey God, I want to get a deer. I'm out here in the cold suffering, but instead of asking God to give me a deer, I said, Lord, I accept whatever you want. You know, maybe the Lord needs us sometimes to sacrifice for others. And yeah, we might want a deer, but let's set that aside and say, all right, Lord, what do you need? What do you want? And how can I participate in your mission to save souls? So you don't have to believe what we believe, but I believe as a follower of Jesus that he calls me to carry a cross to sacrifice for others for salvation. And as St. Paul mentioned in Colossians 1.24, we, as members of the body of Christ, as believers, have a part to play. So Catholic spirituality is not the prosperity gospel at all. We believe as followers of Jesus, we participate in the suffering. And as hunters, as me as a hunter, sometimes I feel as though, or I believe, that God allows me to have difficulties or, or whatever so that I can participate, I even, you know, even in something like hunting. All right, so then the next hunt was November 1st. So this is All Saints Day in the Catholic Church. We remember all saints in heaven. Now, this is preceded by the evening before is Halloween. And if you didn't know this, Halloween comes from All Hallows' Eve. This is the eve before all saints. It actually came from a Catholic solemnity called All Saints Day. The night before is when you start the celebration of All Saints, All Hallows' Eve. And it has become a little bit of a morbid, morbid depiction in our world. Instead of hallowing the saints who have lived and died and now are with God in heaven, um, a lot of people depict goblins and dead, you know, and witches and all kinds of evil things uh, and so they've sort of hijacked a Catholic holiday, a, a solemnity called All Saints Day. Anyway, All Saints Day is November 1st. So on this day, I had some hunting I was planning to do. And I also came across my, I have a first class relic. What is a relic? And what is a first class relic? So this begins Catholics started doing this when the apostles were still alive so like Acts chapter 19 verse 12 in this situation 
St. Paul, God was working miracles through St. Paul. So it's the glory of God through his minister on earth, St. Paul, in this situation. God's doing all kinds of miracles for them. And as recorded in this passage, they would ask for even the handkerchief or scarf of St. Paul, and they would go and perform miracles with those elements. That is called a second-class relic. A first-class relic is part of the saint body in some fashion as part of the body. Second class would be uh, part of their clothing or something like that. Third class relic would be something that was touched to the, the saint's body or a relic. And so, you know, that grace of God is sort of passed on through that. So I have in my pocket a first class relic of Saint Pio, Saint Padre Pio. He lived not that long ago. He died, I think, in the 1960s. This is a priest, a Franciscan priest, who had the stigmata, the wombs of Christ. His hands and his feet bled and his side bled where Jesus' wombs were on the cross. It was a mystical experience that he had throughout most of his priesthood. Like It lasted for about 50 years, and it remained till about two weeks before he actually died, and then God took it, removed the, the stigmata. Now, uh, this is a part of the cloth. They would make him wrap his hands and keep them covered. And so um, he would have cloths that would wrap his hands and his blood would get in the cloth. So this is a piece of cloth with his blood in it. Now, again, drawing from this tradition that Catholics have done since the time of St. Paul, um, great miracles have been worked through things like this. And I have personally met someone whose life was restored to a great capacity through the intercession of St. Pio. And there's even been an Unsolved Mysteries episode done on this individual. I grew up in Pennsylvania. After college, I was, everybody was saying, oh, well, you should be a priest, you know, because here I am, a Catholic boy, trying to really get close to Jesus. And I was like, uh, okay, uh, I don't know. Uh, so I started to visit seminaries and religious orders to figure out if that was my calling. So I was at St. Charles Borromeo Seminary in Philadelphia, and there was another guy on the retreat who had a glass eye. And it just was bugging me. And so at the end of the retreat, I just said, hey, uh, I think his name was Paul. I said, Paul, um, I I'm sorry if this offends you, uh, but what, what's the deal? What happened that you have a glass eye? And so he explained to me the whole story, how his head got crushed in a car accident, he was in a coma, and St. Pio, who was already dead at that point, came and visited him in the hospital and blessed him, and he recovered. And so you can check out the Unsolved Mysteries. It, there's, it's even on YouTube. If I can find it, I'll put a link to it. Now, it's the whole episode of the show, and the Padre Pio section's all, I think, toward the end. So you'd have to fast forward to see that. But anyway, here I am. All Saints Day, I've got this relic of Padre Pio, and I, and I thought, you know, Scripture tells us that we are supposed to pray for one another. I think it's around James 5, 16, right around there. It says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another for healing. Well, we believe that when you're in Christ, let's say this is you're in Christ. You're in the body of Christ. When you are in Christ, you remain in Christ. So let's say I'm with, with Jesus. Now let's say I die. I'm still in Jesus. Let's say my dad's name is Jim. My dad's out there. All right, my dad's in Christ. Let's say I die tomorrow. Unfortunately, here I go, I'm gone. My dad's still alive. My dad's in Christ as well. We're both still in Christ, even though I'm in heaven, hopefully in heaven with Jesus. When, when my dad talks to Jesus or when my dad talks to me in heaven, we believe we're all still in the same body of Christ. We're still together, connected. And so if my dad says to me, Sean, will you intercede for me? Will you pray for me for this situation I'm going through? I'm in heaven with Jesus and I'm going to continue to pray nonstop. I'm no longer bound by time or sin to Jesus for my dad. That's what we do when we ask for a saint to intercede for us. So here I am. I looked at this and I thought of Padre Pio. I made the sign of the cross praying to God the Father in the name of his son Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I said, Padre Pio, I don't want to ask for a deer. I mean, that's what I want, but I don't want to ask for that. I ask you to intercede for me on this hunt. 
And I ask you to help me glorify God in this hunt. So that day of hunting, in the morning, I had a doe coming my way and I want to get one more doe so I can qualify for the bonus buck tag for next year. I need one more to do that. There's a doe coming my way and these two young bucks come out of the blue, out of nowhere, and run the does out of town. There was actually a couple does and they're just hanging around. So that afternoon, I went out hunting again and the temperature warmed up to about 39 and it began to rain. And when it hit the three o'clock hour, I prayed the Divine Mercy Chaplet. If you don't know what the Divine Mercy Chaplet, this image right here is a, a depiction of Jesus. Jesus appeared to a Polish nun named Faustina, Sister Faustina, and he asked her to have this image made and to spread the message of his mercy to the world. And so this is a depiction of Jesus. There's rays coming out of his heart. It represents the blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus on the cross when his heart was pierced at the end by the soldier with the lance. And um, so it depicts that. And we are to turn to Jesus for his mercy. That's what this is all about. And so there's a chaplet of praying and asking for God's mercy. So this is on a Friday. It's the three o'clock hour. I praying, I'm praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Now later that hunt, I had an eight pointer moving through the area. And this is a, a, about a two and a half year old deer. I'm looking for something a little bit older as far as my buck tag goes. And so I'm not planning to shoot. This buck hung out for a long time. He even bedded down in my area for a couple hours. And then he got up, or at least an hour. And then he got up and he walked off. And he ended up meeting up with a four-pointer and coming back through at the end of the hunt. So again, I had a long day of hunting. It's tough when you're sitting all day in the cold. And, and I'm just saying, God, let your will be done. I want to offer this to you. So why am I saying this? Because um, there's a lot of people out there who they get excited about their relationship with God. They want to. They think that if you're blessed by God, that means every time you go out and you get a deer or whatever, or if you ask God to give you a deer, he's going to give it to you. That's not the way to pray. To be a follower of Jesus is to carry your cross and to say, Father, let not my will but yours be done. You could say, hey, I would like to get a deer, but still let not my will yours be done. That was the prayer of Jesus in the garden before he went to the cross. He said, Father, take this cup from me, yet not my will yours be done. And so that's how I like to pray when I'm out there. So I'm out there and I'm just offering it to God. And I say, Lord, if you want this suffering that I go through or this, the pain that you feel when you're out there freezing, take that, Lord, and it, let it be to your glory for the good of souls. Let me participate in your cross in this little way. The next day was All Souls Day, November 2nd. And that's where we remember all the, all of the people who have passed away, all those who have died. If I had died, in, you know, or if I die tomorrow, then next November 2nd, I'll be remembered by people in my family, friends, everybody, All Souls Day, the, the remembering those who have passed away. That's what that day's for. So I went out in the morning, and I had some deer in the area, and there was three times these does started to come my way, and then they veered off and, and went a different direction, and eventually they worked their way off, and nothing ever came close enough for a shot. That afternoon, I went to some public land that I had never deer hunted on before. I walked through this public land one time in the spring, just kind of looking around, and this is my first time going back. All right, folks, it is November the 2nd, and I am trying to get this camera going so I can give you a, a hello. <laughs> I'm walking in on some public ground. Uh, two other parking lot cars in the parking lot, and a third car just pulled in. And he said, oh, I'm gonna go somewhere else and leave you to this spot. I said, hey man, there's plenty of room. He's like, no thanks. I'm planning to walk about 0.8 miles, so close to a mile back in. I prayed intensely, by the way, and uh, didn't necessarily feel like God was giving me a lot of direction, but I did feel a little. So here's another hunter just pulled in. Lord Jesus, may this hunt be for your glory. And the good of souls make this prayer in your name amen so i got in the stand and 
in no time, I had a button buck moving into the area. He eventually worked his way off, and he I think it was pretty sure it was him. He teamed up with two other button bucks, and they came back in for a little bit. And the two that he teamed up with, they were hanging around eating right 15 yards from me. But that third one, he, he was interested in heading somewhere else, so he just moseyed on off. But these other two, they bedded down within 20 yards of my tree stand. I'm watching them, and then I look back over, and a coyote comes down the same way that that first button buck came. And I was thinking, oh, man, I, you know, I'd like to shoot a coyote at some point, but I don't want to mess up this hunt, especially with deer bedded down right behind me. He didn't come close enough anyway. Now here's a nice little piece of footage. Deer have to bed down and chew their cud. Uh, they, they can't just eat, their, their metabolism and digestive system is different than ours. They have to regurgitate and chew the cud in the digestive process. So when you're seeing deer on the hoof, at some point they're gonna have to bed down. And that's what these button bucks were doing. But at the end of the hunt, they got up and went on past me, just you know, 15 yards away, and that was it. I had no other bucks come in within range. But again, I wanted to glorify God by this hunt more than just get a deer. And I, I have some tags I want to fill. Uh, and who knows if I'll end up filling them. It's possible I may not. It all depends on what God wants. So the point of this video is to share a little bit with you of how Catholics pray and, and how to unite your hardships with Jesus for the sake of souls. Because... There are people out there who are far from God, and it takes a sacrifice for them sometimes to have a conversion of heart. And so when you're out there, if you're having a tough hunt and you're feeling miserable, I encourage you to consider turning your thoughts to Jesus and saying, Lord, I offer this to you as my small way of trying to participate in the sufferings that you endured for our sake. Let me suffer for the sake of another, that they too might experience the salvation you won for us. So there you have it, folks. That is the theology, the spirituality of a Catholic in a hunting situation. And I hope that you will consider it if you don't do that already. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. But please don't try to bring me down or lash out against me or try to convince me of something else because I know that this is what God has called me to. And I share it with you in case you feel that call as well. Until next time, take care and God bless. And you might be wondering, hey, Sean, you gave us multiple scripture passages. What about the bow giveaway? Just write them all down. Take care.